Michael H says, what was the deciding factor switching from two wave makers to one on your 210? The deciding factor was that the wave maker I have on my 210 is super powerful. It was so powerful that it was pulling the substrate from the other side of the tank. It was pulling it and I was getting a bare bottom tank on the other side. So I knew it, it was, if it's powerful enough to pull the substrate on the other side, there's no need for that second wave maker to push stuff on the bottom of the other side. The one wave maker on top, on this side, was pulling everything, including the substrate. So I said, okay, that one is strong enough. So I stuck with one, and it also keeps the tank clean. When I wake up in the morning, I ask myself, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> when I wake up in the morning, there's no poop on my substrate. Everything is super clean. Um, so it's doing its job. So I said, no need for two. What I do have though, Michael, just for clarification, I do have a second wave maker behind my 3D background. And the reason why I do that is because as poop is getting sucked behind the background, because that's where I have my filters, um, I put a wave maker back there just to keep that poop moving because the flow of water behind the background is minimal to none. But the wave maker back there will help keep that poop moving to find the intakes. If you guys are interested in African cichlids, I have a free webinar course. This webinar is free. You just go sign up, hit your email, and you can join in on the webinar. I'm giving you the top three secrets of what you need to know to keep African cichlids. Don't feel intimidated. It is not as difficult as many think that it is. It's not really that hard, um, especially if you have some guidance from a webinar like this. I also have a full paid course that is optional at the end of the free webinar. If you want to take advantage of it, you can.